Well, hello, friends. Hello again. Good to be together. And Amen. Good to be with you that may be watching in a certain sense. So let's, let's open in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we are so grateful for these times together. And we think of how your disciples, Lord Jesus Christ, asked you to teach them how to pray. And we need to explore your answer to them and take it in carefully so that each word would be an important word for us and that we would learn and grow. There's just so much to say, but Lord, will you please direct us in the right way to go? And we thank you for our friendship over these decades, but we thank you also, and most especially for your work for centuries mm. of building up the body of Christ. So may we uh, be aided in our calling here today as we explore this wonderful standard for prayer and for the lived out experience of Christians in fellowship with you and with one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, what do we have on the docket today? Well, today it's Hallowed Be Thy Name. Yes. And that's probably got two basic concepts in it that we want to address and many sub-concepts under those. Okay. So we want to talk about what is hallowed. Yes. Kind of an old-fashioned word. Yes. And we want to get a sense for what the name is, what lies behind that okay. word, which is so simple right. in spelling in English and in speaking. Yeah. And it's so simple to say Steve yes. or Bruce. Name. But there's much more behind that when yeah. we think of hallowed be thy name, right. speaking to God. Mm. So um, what do you suppose are some of the other good synonyms for the word hallowed? Well, you've suggested one. I really enjoy hearing from you on this. It really has to do with glory, doesn't it? What, what was your thought? Tell, tell us about that. Okay. Hmm. Well, um, as I indicated, hallowed is an old-fashioned word. Yes. And I think it kind of, it was a good word in 16, 10, 11 when the King James Bible was translated. Right. And because our translators want to carry on traditions, we still have the word today. But right. if we we're translating it today, we might well say, thy name be glorified, or Glor your name be glorified. Be, be glorified. Be glorious. Would we even say that? Be, sure. Be glorious. Sure. Yeah. 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 But we want to keep in mind that the prayer is exactly that. It's mm. a prayer mm. that God's name would be glorified. Yes. We don't make his name glorious. Yeah. We're not declaring that in the prayer. Right. right. We're asking that God would undertake to glorify his own, his own name. Yeah. Now, um, we don't do that naturally. Mm -hmm. And so some of our fathers in the faith, going back to, uh, oh, goodness, the mid-1600s, mm -hmm. when they decided to write down uh, some of the things that, that they thought this prayer encompassed, mm. uh, they asked at the beginning that God would enable us and others, enable us and others, mm. to glorify him mm -hmm. in all of those things by which he makes himself known. Okay. And that he would also arrange everything to his own glory. Hmm. So I think glory is at the heart of it. Mm -hmm. And we need to be aware that in many ways, mm -hmm. God is very concerned about his own glory. Mm -hmm. That's another thing that would be hard for us to think about and appreciate 21st really. century people. Yeah. Because if you and I were concerned about our own glory, mm -hmm. we would be viewed as kind of self-centered. Right. And maybe properly so. Right, right. So maybe braggers do that. You know, they, they right. want to glorify themselves. Right. 
Right. And, and, and this, this brings us back to the thinking about our Father who art in mm. heaven and the difference between the creator and the creature. Sure. What, what a difference there is. And that it's right for God to be the number one. Of course it is. Right. And so, we're not. You know, so things that are right for him are not right for us necessarily. Right. And if we, uh, if we could grasp the full glory of God, mm. which, by the way, we won't even do in heaven. Heaven has yeah. to be eternal because <laughs> we're going to learn more of that glory mm. on a day-by-day -day basis. But if we could grasp that yeah. glory, we would say, thank you, God, for mm. being so concerned yes. about your own glory yes. right. that you would reveal it to us. You yeah. couldn't do anything better for That's us. That's right. This is so right. This is so right and so good for us to, right. to have God glorious, which he is. Yeah and to recognize him. You know, one of the challenges I have just with this first part of it, of hallowed be thy name and, and thinking about glorious, we've taken the word hallowed, which is, we even pronounce it in an old English way, yes, right. instead of hallowed, right. but to, to make, make something holy. We'll take that word holy mm -hmm. and we've put in glory, but these are two words that people don't understand in some ways. Yeah. You know, uh, I've heard people talk about it this way, sort of shining the light on something that's worthy of light. Um, but, you know, I thought it might be helpful to mention that the underlying Greek word, because the New Testament's written in Greek, so the underlying Greek word has to do with holiness, and we, we get this idea of sanctify. Mm -hmm. Again, maybe another difficult word, but the idea that something is supposed to be set apart as different than the common. You know, even we talked about a holy space right, right. last time. Sacred space. A sacred space yeah. in heaven, you know, right. so that somehow God is the holy one mm -hmm. of Israel. Right. And we are supposed to be all for that. We are cheering that on, and we want God's name to be held in the highest regard yeah. all over the earth, you know, by angels, uh, by human beings, by everybody, you know, let all things that have breath praise the Lord. I think there's something there set apart, you know, set apart from all the rest, you know? What sure, are you sure. Yeah. Um, I think we also, I, I want to return briefly yeah. to, to a point I made. Mm -hmm. We have to pray, how would be thy name, because we are praying at least in part that we would be enabled to hallow his name, to right. glorify his name. That's it doesn't point. just happen. Right. We don't roll out of bed in the morning yeah. and we're glorifying God. As long as we're in these bodies right. on this earth, right. uh, we need a helpful, holy nudge in <laughs> yeah. that direction. That's right, right. So we have sin in our lives, mm -hmm. you know, and one day we're, we're going to be rid of all that. We'll be perfected in holiness. And we will glorify the name of God. We will hallow the name of God perfectly, which will be marvelous. But we, we want a good, healthy start on that right now. <laughs> right. So uh, we do want to get out of bed and glorify the name of God. And we have to, we have, to have help right. from the Holy Spirit. We also use means. You know, we use things like the Bible to get us going. Right. I uh, remember you saying once... Uh, no baseball before Bible, right? Right. Isn't that a principle? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, before you look at the scores, get to the scriptures. And, 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 and I think each of us, have, we have some tendencies, you know, to move in different directions. Hey, before we move on further, yeah. I just thought it would be helpful to note, this is the first petition. Yes. This is, a, this is really important. Yes. All we've done so far is our Father who art in heaven. Mm -hmm. Now this is the first thing we're asking for. Right. Your name, you know, let it be held in the highest regard. Right. And again, it, it's, it is a petition. It's not a declaration. No. We're asking. Yeah, this is, his name this is we need. Glorified. We need this. Lord, please glorify your name, you know. Um, I mentioned earlier that uh, some of our fathers in the faith in the 1640s uh, put down in writing what this might mean. Oh, good. And, yeah. And uh, I'm actually going to read part Let's of that, hear that. directly. Uh, this comes from a document called the Westminster Larger Catechism. And this was how 
the Christian culture of the times passed on its beliefs, its values. This was how the culture was transmitted. And, and you're going to read it in a kind of modernized yeah. form, right? Yeah. Right. Good. So in the first request, may your name be hallowed, we acknowledge the utter inability and lack of motivation of ourselves and all people to honor God properly. We pray the following that God would enable and incline us and others by his grace to know, to acknowledge, and to highly esteem him, his titles, his attributes, his ordinances, his word, his works, and whatever he is pleased to make himself known by. I think I'll read the whole thing. And yeah, let's read it, and then we'll look at it. Yeah, yeah. We pray the following, that we would glorify him in thought, word and deed, hmm. that he would prevent and remove atheism, ignorance, idolatry, profaneness, and whatever is dishonorable to him, mm -hmm. and that by his providence mm -hmm. ruling over all things, he would direct and use all things to his own glory. Mm, that's, that's really beautiful. It's a beautiful statement. And if we go back to that, the first item here. Right. Yeah. You know, I think this is one of the things that would be so easily missed that you just think, well, hallowed be thy name. Well, this is just about the name, whatever it may be. And we're going to have to talk about that, too. Sure, what, sure. What, what name are we talking about? So you might just think, well, is that just about a specific word? Mm -hmm. I said, well, it is about a series of words, but it's about more than that. Yeah. You know, the, the name uh, represents many things, including what we'll talk about later authority, mm. but it also, it represents the person. That's the key, I think. In a more general sense. Yeah. So the words I just read talk about God's attributes becoming known. Right. And attributes isn't a word that we use a lot right. uh, these days. So what do we think attributes are? Well, an attribute of this shirt is that it's red. Right. You know, it's really descriptive words that help us to understand something of the being, the character of, uh, of in this case, God. You know, right. so to be able to have these attributes, like like the power of God, the love of God, the justice of God, these are attributes sure. of Almighty sure. God. Okay, and then um, this also referred to His ordinances mm. and. We don't necessarily think of the law of God as ordinances. Yeah. It's a little bit of an old-fashioned word as well, but that's right. really what what's in mind or what's in view. Well, there. and that's also broader sense also that. things like the things that we do when we worship. Mm -hmm. We have certain things that we do, and if you're going to hallow the name of God, you've got to have a respectful attitude at a very minimum towards things like well, the Lord's Supper. You right. know, right. this is something that God has. So, yeah, that there's an awful lot here. I just I think. Right away, we just have to be able to see there's a lot in the name. This yeah. is this is much more maybe than what we're used to thinking about, hallowed be thy name. Part of the prayer, according to these fathers in the faith, is to acknowledge God, to highly esteem him, yeah. and, uh, excuse me, pray that he would bring about whatever he is pleased to make himself known by. So right. that kind of opens up our minds to say, okay, God, how are you revealing yourself to me in this situation Right, where maybe I didn't expect you to be present? Well, that's right. We have providence. We have the different things that are actually happening in our lives and in the history around us. We have creation, but then we have the scriptures. Right. And God's so pleased to let himself be known to us through the scriptures and so when we say, hallowed be thy name, we'd like the scriptures to be held in high regard because of their connection right. to God as God's word. Right. Yeah. So are we ready to start talking a little bit more about the name? Not quite yet. Right. One little thing. All right. And this, this is interesting to me because this Greek word here that has to do with holy and you know, to, to make something hallowed or sanctified, well, this is also a word from which we get the... Uh, the name that is used for believers hmm. in uh, the New Testament. They're actually literally called the holy ones. 
Now that's not the holier than thou ones. <laughs> Maybe sometimes we make a mistake that way, but we are to be considered somehow holy, set apart from all the world. So I think there's a way of treating one another that's a part of hallowed be thy name. Mm. And I think in our baptisms, you know, we have been baptized in the name, the singular name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. That precious holy name has been put on us. So that reminds us what we really should already know that, that we need to treat people with respect, but it's more mm. now. It's really set apart. Bruce, you're my brother in Christ. You're a child of God. And there are ways for me to speak about you or treat you that would just be it against how it would be thy name. Yeah, it would be wrong. Just as it'd be wrong to, to treat the Bible with disrespect, I think there's something very personal and practical here for us within the body of Christ. Yeah. You know? um, I really hadn't thought much about that. Yeah. Before just now. I'm very glad you raised that point. So maybe it is the time then to switch a yeah. little bit to the name. Name, yes, sounds good. And uh, yeah. what we want to keep in mind here is that when Jesus was teaching his disciples how to pray, mm. he was speaking to a specific audience at yes. a specific time. So he would have used words that would have had a meaning that might have been a little bit different to them mm. from what they have, what those same words mean to us. So, for example, when he talked about the name, yes. What would a Jewish person wow. who was familiar with right. the uh, Old Testament, what would, he, well, what would he hear or she hear? Yeah, exactly. Well, the name of God was considered to, to be so holy right. that many people felt you couldn't even say it. You, you had to read another word right. when you came to the name of God. And we have in Exodus 3, Exodus 34, we have God giving his own name to Moses. Mm -hmm. And that name is very mysterious. It's a, it's four Hebrew consonants. Mm -hmm. And we have to do our best to fill in the vowels and try and make it work. So we say Yahweh or Jehovah. We're not really sure uh, how to pronounce what seems to be unpronounceable. So what does it mean? It seems to have to do with the idea of I am. I am, being, yeah, being. being. Mm -hmm. I am who I am. That only God could really say that. I'm the source of all being. Mm -hmm. Everything comes from me, all right? I am who I am. And this word was so holy that when they came to it in the scriptures, they would substitute another word, Adonai, which means Lord, when they read it. Now, I think we are allowed to say this word, but mm -hmm. that became the custom of people right. to try and say, well, the safest thing for us is to never say that word. I don't think that really works, yeah. Yeah. but I think that's the idea. That's just one of the names of God yeah. that we have. I like I am that I am. Mm. Uh, for me, it establishes the ground of being. Yes. All being is rooted and grounded in God, mm. which is not different from what you said conceptually. Yeah. It's maybe yeah. a few different words. Right. Um, okay, so Old Testament hearers of Jesus yeah. would have understood that to blaspheme the name was a capital crime. Yes, yes, yeah, you, and it, this happened. We have the case law given to us in the Old Testament where they wondered, oh, are we really going to, are we going to take this person's life now? We're going to stone this person. Y yes, you you are. So it was a very very serious offense. In other words, it was death penalty. It was a death penalty for blaspheming the name. Right. Yeah. Doesn't that seem a bit extreme? It it certainly seems extreme to us today. Yeah. But then that shows us that we're missing something. Yeah. When maybe. when we disagree with God, it turns out that. <laughs> that more than 99% of the time, yeah. we're wrong. <laughs> so we have to actually get into the mindset of the scriptures right. and God's worldview. Mm -hmm. Say, Lord, you're right. Your name is holy. And we should treat it with the utmost regard. You know? yeah. 
And I, I think that moves us into some New Testament uses too. Sure. Of this uh, name of God, which I, I think, of course, the very name Jesus mm. is connected to Yahweh because of, of this idea of Yeshua in the Hebrew, but Isus in the Greek and Jesus in English. This really translates to something like this. I am salvation. Imagine so, that. Yeah. Connected, obviously, with I am that I yeah, am. I am. All right. And I am salvation has come in person. Yeah. So when you treat him as if he's casting out demons by the prince of demons, right? well, you're definitely violating this idea here. How would be thy name? No, you're treating the son of God. With disrespect. Now, that isn't something you just made up on the spot. I didn't make that, that up. That it's, actually happened. That so was real. Flesh that out for us. Yeah, that was real. Bit. So so really what, what it comes down to is the people who were the enemies of Jesus, of which there were many mm -hmm. during his earthly ministry, they were looking for ways to discredit him, even though he was doing marvelous miracles. Right. And nobody denied that he was doing miracles. That was so obvious that it would have been foolish to try and deny it. Everyone knew that. So then what do you do? Well, here he is casting out demons and people are obviously changed right there in that moment. It's so striking. So what can you say? Well, you say, well, he must be, he must be able to cast out demons because he's in the line of demonic authority somehow. Yeah. So because the prince of demons is somehow, he's using the prince of demons to cast out demons or in the, in the employ of the prince of demons. Oh, well, this is a very dangerous approach for us to take. Right. Really, to realize, well, this is the Son of God who's come not only to obey the law, but then to die on the cross for our sins. Yeah. Do we want to treat his name disrespectfully? Mm. No. We want God to hallow his name. Sure, yeah, sure. And so there, we, saw, we see from that story that there's, there's power even in the name itself. There's authority yes. uh, in the name. Now, at one point when uh, some of Jesus... Uh, disciples after his resurrection were preaching the gospel they were preaching the story yes. of the resurrection yes the, the authorities in Jerusalem rounded them up put them in jail right and then they demanded to know of these men by what name right are you doing this yeah how did they answer right so you know, they, they were very clear about this and very upfront. Look, if you want to know how we did this, it wasn't by our own power right. or by our own name that we did this, but it was by the name of Jesus, the I am salvation man, the Emmanuel, God with us, you know? Right. And they, they wanted them to stop talking in that name. And they said, well, judge for yourself whether it's right for us to obey you or to obey God. Because there is no other name given among men by which we must be saved. That's how important that is, because the name represents the person. So when we say there's no other name, we're saying there's no other person by which we must be saved. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So we talked about the fact that there are other names besides this strange Jehovah yes. name. What are some of the other names that uh, we might want to talk about today? Well, just one, just to mention one from the Hebrew, Elohim. Mm -hmm. Now that im tells you you've got a plural, right. but it's, it's a singular in the way that it's actually used, but it's a plural. Very interesting. Right. You know? Where in particular is that used? Where well, the singular and the plural would make a difference? Well, you know, I think um, just even thinking about creation. Right. You know, and here we have God, but it's not God's, it's God who created. But then we do find out that the spirit of God is hovering over the face of the waters. Mm -hmm. And we also have God said, let there be light. Right. And in the New Testament, we hear in the beginning was the word. Yeah. And the word was with God. The word was God. So God said, let there be light must be equivalent to the word. Mm -hmm. And we're told in, in John's gospel, John 1, that the word was made flesh. So we have Father, Son, and Holy Spirit right there at creation. Right. And yet it's Elohim. 
let's take an English word for mm-hmm. that and, and just make sure that when people are reading their Bibles, they should understand that when they encounter the word Lord, yes. L-O-R-D, but it's all capital letters, yes. they're probably encountering a use of the word Jehovah. Yes, Jehovah. That's right. And that you are. And sometimes they'll even, in a translation, they'll do capital G, capital O, capital D. Yeah. That's still Jehovah. Right, right. So depending on how the other words around it make it right for a translation, when you see all capitals like that, mm-hmm. and it's referring to God, you've got Yahweh, yeah. Jehovah yeah. Uh, there. Now, there's a very familiar psalm, Psalm 23, that yes. includes the phrase that, speaking of God, mm-hmm. he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's mm-hmm. sake. Yes. Yeah. Now, why would he have to mm. do that for his name's sake? You know, God is much more committed to his name than we can even imagine right now. So he does many, many things, really for the glory of his own name. Yeah. And he makes this really clear in the Old Testament prophets. He said, I didn't do this first and foremost for you. Right. I certainly didn't do it because you were good. <laughs> <laughs> but I did it for my own name's sake. So it's right. This kind of takes us full circle. Yes, it, does. it is right for God to glorify his own name. Right. It's right. And he does many, many things for that good purpose. So when we say, hallowed be thy name, we're really getting on board with what God has already declared as his own intention, that he would show his name to be glorious. It's what we want. And I love what you said at the beginning. We want this to happen in us, that we want to be changed so that we're hallowing agents Mm -hmm. of God's name, even though we know he's the one. He's the one who really does this. Should we pray? Yeah, what are, where do we go from here? Just to, Oh, okay. Uh, just so we know next time. Okay. Hallowed be thy name. Do you know what's next well, out there? Yes, I think it's thy kingdom <laughs> Thy come. kingdom come. Can't wait. Right. Can't wait. So, That's great. I'm we'll eager for that yeah, too, good. for sure. Yeah. Our Father in heaven, we pray that you would enable us Amen. and others to glorify you in all those things whereby you make yourself known and that you would arrange all things to your glory. Father, we want to be part of the program of elevating you and your name throughout the created universe and in the hearts and minds of all of your people. May that be one of the consequences of our talking together today and of people viewing and listening to this conversation. May your name be blessed and glorified forever. Amen. 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 Everyone, have a have a marvelous day. You know, the Lord is good and you don't have to worry about anything. He's right. he's got he's got it all in hand. God bless you, friends.